Alan, take it away. Yeah, thanks, Kevin. So in creating massive profits, so we've heard um, some fabulous um, examples and ideas from Cheryl and from Rosanna. Um, Cheryl talked about um, um, personalities with Rosanna about the business system. So there's there's a, there's a piece, there's a third leg of what we call the boss system, and that's called the natural laws. And uh, in order to to really create massive profits, an understanding of the natural laws is required. So what are the natural laws? So the natural laws are the laws that kind of govern the universe, and they determine how everything in the universe works. And if you want to think about, well, what's a natural law, well, just think about, like, gravity. So, you know, if you jump out of a building, you're going to fall and probably die if it's fairly high. So that's a natural law, and there are infinite number of natural laws that govern how the world works and certainly how business works. So some of the most important natural laws that I've discovered um, or um, or have found um, that really help in my life and my business are the, the um, next dimension principle. And this is a um, this law states that in any in any given dimension there are levels of proficiency. So um, getting to the top, getting to be the most proficient in any one dimension um, only gets you to the top of that dimension. And then there's a another level and another level and another level um, or infinity. So um, I had a hard time understanding this one at first and. Um, and then, then Mark pointed out, um, gave me an example of, say, a um, high school um, athlete. So the high school athlete, maybe in junior or senior year, they're pretty good, you know, and maybe at the end of senior year they're in the varsity and they're, um, you know, they're, they're really at the top and they're the best athlete on the team, maybe even of all the teams around. So they would be on a scale of 1 to 10, uh, a 10. Now, when they go into college, for example, um, are they still going to be at the top? Probably not. So they're going to start at a, in a completely different dimension. They'll start at a one or a two, and they'll have to work up to that dimension. Then maybe they get to the top dimension of that dimension. Maybe they go into the pros. So um, that's a great example and really helped me think about um, what the next dimension is. So. What prevents us from uh, jumping to higher dimensions? So there's another principle that I learned about, which is called the walls of opportunity. And that states that whenever there's a opportunity, we call it, um, we, there's, there's never problems, there's only opportunities. So whenever there's an opportunity, a wall presents itself, um, there are numerous ways to go around it and to try to get through it. So you can go over it, under it, to the right, to the left. You can blow it up. You can try to tear it down. And there are actually other ways as well. So um, what happens when most people come across a wall of opportunity? Um, you know, they might try one or two ways to try to deal with the issue. Um, and if it doesn't work out, you know, maybe they give up and turn back. And maybe that's going to be the uh, the thing that keeps them from jumping to another dimension. But at the same time, they might try one or two or three, and maybe one of those works. Um, and they say, aha, I found it. Um, good, I can go on to the next issue. Um, and maybe that's a good solution to the problem, but maybe it's not a great solution. Um, and maybe what they do is they're reinforcing the way that they think with that solution. So going further and always trying to push harder um, is the thing that can get us through walls of opportunity to higher dimensions. Well, so say that you do push forward with, um, with walls of opportunity and you stick with it and you don't accept the easy solutions that come or the ones that we're used to, um, you might find yourself in some pretty rough waters. Um, there is a principle called the Mach 1 principle. So the Mach 1 principle states that 
um, if you're really going to jump to another dimension, that um, just before you do, you reach the point of maximum turbulence and maximum resistance. So what that means is that the closer you get to a breakthrough to a new dimension, the harder and harder it becomes. And there's a story about how um, Chuck Yeager, who was the first uh, man to ever break the sound barrier, um, a lot of people had tried to do that before, but um, as soon as they got close to um, the speed at which you break through the sound barrier, the whole airplane starts to shake. There's lots and lots of turbulence, and everybody before um, thought that if they kept going and they actually hit the speed, uh, the sound barrier speed, that the airplane would actually disintegrate and they die. So they pulled back on the throttle and they and everybody had stopped. Well, Chuck Yeager um, said, "No, I'm, uh, you know, I want to see what's going to happen here." And so he just pushed it, and when he hit that turbulence, he kept going. And as soon as he broke through the sound barrier, everything became smooth um, because all the rest is resistance. He was moving faster than the resistance, which was now behind him. So it teaches us that. Um, in order to create massive profits, um, we have to understand the next dimension principle, we have to understand the walls of opportunity principle, and we have to understand what happens when we break through to a new dimension, which is the Mach 1 principle. So thank you very much. And anybody have any questions? Nancy, do you have a question? I think you did a terrific job, Alan. And thank what you. kind of question might you have? Um, how can I use that, that Mach 1 principle? In, in today, right now? That's a great question. So I know that you're facing some particular challenges today. Sure. Uh, maybe in the way that you think about something or some things um, can be challenging. I think, you know, uh, I see that. I, I get that. I face the same thing. So as you try to get through that, what happens is that, you know, most people think that as you work through a problem, it gets easier as you get closer to the answer. But it's actually just the opposite. And so the fact that it gets harder and more resistant shows that that is when you're actually really making progress towards the solution, kind of counterintuitive. So does that help? Um, it helps to know that I'm going in the right direction. Sure. So Nancy, like Nancy, quick question. Do you think, like, if, you know, somebody was kind of, stuck in something and they were able to go ahead and make a breakthrough and just say, you know what, I'm going to do it. Do you think that inspire you or maybe not so much? Sure it would. Okay. okay. Yeah, I didn't know. Sorry for interrupting. Go ahead, Alan. Yeah. And Nancy, do you think that if you were to do that and make a breakthrough, <laughs> that would inspire other people around you to make a breakthrough? <laughs> I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> oh, 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 well, wait a minute. <laughs> it would inspire me, Nancy. <laughs> me too. <laughs> me too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any other questions? <laughs> That's good. I'm going to charge for it. This is not fun. <laughs> All right. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. We really appreciate that. Wow, the Mach 1 principle. 